So the difference between a split squat and a lunge is a lunge denotes you're actually stepping with the leg. When we're doing a split squat, as in the exercise here, the foot is going to stay fixated on the ground. You're just going to be going down to a kneeling position and then pushing back up tall. Key points to doing the split squat correctly is shifting your weight down and forward towards the front leg when you're in that bottom position. About 80% of your body weight should be on that front leg and that back leg should be light on the ground. And then when you push back up tall and you're in standing, then you're going to be at 50-50% body weight. So there's a forward and downward weight shift that occurs as you go down into the split squat and then an upward and backward motion as you push your way up from the floor. The knee should track directly over top of your shoelaces and then perform for desired number of reps and under control. Adding a small plate that's two to four inches tall up off the ground is just going to add a little bit more hip mobility requirements for the front leg, getting you deeper into a split squat position. That's the only benefit of adding a plate. So I'll do variations with and without a plate in my programs. Start with the exercise body weight, perform for desired number of reps, generally between five and 10 reps per leg. Once you can do that comfortably, then start adding load, progressively weighted heavier and heavier. Once you get to the point in time where you can use 25s in either hand, then you have the option of continually progressing the weight with the dumbbells or going to a barbell on the back position to keep adding more and more load over time. Now the difference between this split squat and some of the other split squats you may have seen in the past where that back knee does not touch the ground and you try to keep as straight of a back leg as possible, in this back knee bent split squat version we're trying to tap the knee to the ground and keep the knee directly underneath the hips, shoulders, and head. This split squat where the back knee bends and we keep a nice vertical line down from the head all the way to the knee tapping the floor is much more obtainable for the majority of the population. So this split squat version is a nice way to still get all the benefits of the split squat. It doesn't make one split squat better than another. It still gets all the benefits of the split squat without forcing that back knee into a straightened position. Personally, I experience many people trying to force their way through more and more hip extension and develop hip pain, hip flexor pain, groin pain, hernias, simply by forcing that back knee straight when they're not currently capable of achieving that. Doesn't mean that you can't work and progress towards that back leg straight. This exercise simply will touch a wider, more broad range of athletes and clients that you work with.